Imagine, you're planning an eight-day trip in space. Just a quick escape from Earth, experiencing zero gravity, and taking in breathtaking cosmic views. Sounds perfect, right? Well, that's exactly what NASA astronauts, Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore thought. When they boarded Boeing's Starliner in June, they were heading to the International Space Station for what was supposed to be a simple mission, test out the systems, nothing too complicated, and just an easy eight days, what could possibly go wrong? But things didn't go as planned. A helium leak was discovered, not the kind that makes your voice funny, make a brain tumor look like a birthday present, <laughs> but the dangerous kind, and then there were control thruster problems. So NASA determined it was too risky for them to return aboard the Starliner, and then Starliner returned to Earth without them. Fast forward to now, it's September, and astronauts, who were supposed to be back in a week, are still up there and they'll be in space, until February 2025, catching a ride back to Earth, with SpaceX's Crew-9, so much for a quick trip. NASA's caution here may have its roots, in past tragedies. Because, the US space program, experienced two major disasters. The Challenger explosion in 1986, during launch, and the Columbia disaster in 2003, during re-entry. Both incidents resulted in the loss of astronauts. So it's no wonder why NASA is playing it safe now. Meanwhile, a Russian spacecraft brought back two Russian cosmonauts and an American astronaut, Tracy Dyson, who spent a solid six months up there from the International Space Station just a few days ago. Russian media proudly highlighted that they had successfully returned both their cosmonauts and an American astronaut to Earth quietly showcasing their space capabilities to the world. And this isn't the first time Russia has helped NASA out. For nearly a decade, after the US retired its space shuttle program in 2011, NASA had to rely on Russian Soyuz rockets to transport astronauts until SpaceX finally began providing transportation in 2020. While Russia's media took a light jab at NASA, one can only imagine the sharp critiques if the roles were reversed and NASA had been in Russia's position. Take the example of Russia's Luna 25 mission, which crash-landed on the moon on August 19, 2023. This is a humiliating blow for Moscow. And India is in the race now too. Chandrayaan-3 is due to touch down on the moon on Wednesday. If India succeeds, that will be another blow to Russia's reputation in space. And just four days later, India's Chandrayaan-3 made a flawless landing on the lunar surface. When Luna 25 failed, Western media outlets didn't hold back, with headlines calling it a humiliating blow for Moscow. In fact, many remarked that Russia's failure was particularly stinging, given that a developing nation like India was on the verge of a major lunar success. The timing couldn't have been worse for Russia, given India's Chandrayaan-3 was approaching the moon, just as Luna 25 crashed. And when India succeeded, it wasn't just acknowledged for its achievement, it was also used to underscore Russia's failure. On another note, news outlets from Britain offered congratulations to India for its lunar triumph, but quickly turned the moment into a controversial topic. Congratulate India. I would also like to now invite India to return the 2.3 billion pounds foreign aid money. They sarcastically suggested that India should return the 2.3 billion pounds in foreign aid the UK provided between 2016 and 2021. The host implied that a nation capable of landing on the moon shouldn't be receive aid or rely on British taxpayer money. This is how they managed to display a prime example of ridiculous journalism. Another example. In 2022, NASA astronaut Scott Kelly mocked Russia's Soyuz rockets during a Twitter spat with Dmitry Rogozin, former head of Russia's space agency. Kelly pointed out the size difference between the massive US space launch system, SLS, and Russia's Soyuz. But here's the funny part, they kind of forgot how NASA relied on those very same Soyuz rockets for years. While Russia's Soyuz rockets are smaller and cheaper, they have been highly reliable workhorse for getting astronauts and cargo to low Earth orbit. 
Now, the SLS, or Space Launch System, that's a whole different beast. It's designed for the big stuff, like sending astronauts to the Moon or even Mars, with significantly more payload capacity. Only thing is, the SLS hasn't launched humans yet, but when it does, it's aiming big. However, Soyuz was NASA's ride, after the shuttle retired in 2011, allowing NASA to resume sending astronauts from American soil until SpaceX stepped in. Both rockets serve very different purposes and are designed with vastly different goals, payload capacities and destinations in mind. The most famous example occurred when the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite, in 1957, and the US was completely caught off guard. They thought the Soviets were way behind in space tech, but Sputnik proved them wrong and kicked off the space race. It was such a shock that the US had to create NASA, the next year, in 1958, just to catch up. But imagine what could have been if the US had prioritized peaceful collaboration, instead of fueling conflicts around the world. Instead of wars and military rivalries, if Russia and the US had worked together, the world might have witnessed monumental progress in space exploration, benefiting all of humanity. But no, US foreign policy, always tangled in wars and power plays, keeps dragging everyone down, including themselves. And the constant interference, with the US, at the forefront of global conflict, has not only hindered Russia's progress, but also undermined its own potential. And here's the irony. NASA is considered the most advanced space organization today, primarily due to its cutting-edge technology, ambitious missions, and international leadership in space exploration. On the other hand, Russia's space industry is currently facing significant challenges, due to Western sanctions and the Kremlin's focus on military priorities. The sanctions, which intensified after the invasion of Ukraine, have severely limited Russia's access to advanced technologies and components necessary for space missions. This has resulted in underfunding and a reliance on outdated equipment, making it difficult for Russia to maintain its previous level of expertise in space exploration. But surprisingly, once again, Russian technology helped the US. And even with the ongoing war in Ukraine and the US being actively involved, Russia still stepped up to bring American astronauts to Earth. That says a lot. 